Today, I'm going to be showing you on how you can super easily add an AFK system into your Roblox game. So before we get started, let me show you how this system works. So I'm going to head into Roblox Studio. And then once I'm inside, I'm actually going to leave Roblox. And as you can see, a force field goes on my avatar and my body turns into a force field too. So it has that cool little effect that you see. Now let's head into Roblox Studio where I'll show you how you can make this for yourself. Now that we're inside of Roblox Studio, let's just head into a base plate. You could head into a game if you already had one. Now the first crucial step of this tutorial is making sure that we detect when the user leaves Roblox and when they come back. By the way, all the source code for this tutorial can be found in the description down below. Now back to the tutorial, what we're going to do is create a local script inside of starter player scripts. So let's click on plus and then local script. Next we need to import the user input service. So to do this we can say local input service equals game get service user input service. Now the user input service is typically responsible for detecting keystrokes and other actions that the client does. In this case, we're detecting when the player unfocuses the Roblox tab. So to detect when the player does this, we're going to use the input service dot window focused and window focused released events. Although first we need to communicate with our server. And the best way to communicate with a server from a client is through the use of remote events. So let's say local replicated storage equals game gets oops equals game get service replicated storage and then we need to create a couple of remote events. So let's head over to replicated storage and click plus on a remote event and then let's create a remote event called focused and then let's create one called unfocused. Now we need to fire these remote events whenever the player either focuses or unfocuses. So to do this we can say input service dot window focused connect function and obviously we're going to now fire our focused event. So actually let's define our local focused event equals replicated storage wait for child focused and then let's copy this line and put our unfocused event and say unfocused in here. Now the reason we use wait for child is because let's say the user loads in and maybe they're a bit on a laggy device. Now if they're a bit on a laggy device then we don't want the code to try and get the remote event before it's loaded in otherwise we get an error. So we wait until these two events are usable and there. So now let's head over to line 8 and say focused event fire server and that's gonna be it. So that now fires the remote event that is called focused and now our server will know that the focus event is being fired. Now we can copy this and instead of saying window focused, say dot window focused released and then let's do the unfocused event. Perfect. Now let's head over to our server script service where we'll start with making this work on the server. So let's create a script inside of server script service and call it afk manager. And now we're essentially going to copy the first four lines of the code here. So let's copy that and then paste it into AFK Manager. Now let's get started by detecting the events that happened. So let's say focused event dot on server event connect then function and then player. So we're detecting when the focused event is fired then we're getting the player that did it and then we're going to copy this too and copy the unfocused event on server event. Perfect. Now we need to actually make these two remote events actually do something when they're fired. So now what we need to do is let's create the force field. So let's do local function create force field and then player. The functions are basically little groups of code that we can call at any time. And then inside of here this is where all of our force field creation logic is going to go. So let's say local force field equals and then we're going to say instance.new and then force field and this creates a brand new force field then we're going to say um, force field dot visible equals true so this will now make the force field visible for all the users inside and then we're going to say force field dot parent equals player dot character then what we're going to do is call the create force field function and then we're going to pass the player that was focused. Now actually 
there's a bit of a mistake here. We're not actually going to create the force field when the user is focused, but when they're unfocused. So let's move that function over to line 18, so it creates the force field when the user becomes unfocused. Now let's test this out, so we're going to head into play, okay, it's loading in, perfect, and then I'm going to click somewhere else, and as you can see, we get that force field. Now right now, if we focus back in, we don't actually lose this force field. So to do this, we can actually now handle the focused event, so when they become focused again. So let's create a new function, so let's say local function, and let's call this function remove force field. Once again, it's going to take the player, and then we're going to say player dot character dot force field with capital F's colon destroy. Then, when the focused event is fired, we're going to say remove force field, and then we're going to pass the player. So now let's go ahead and test that out. So we're going to head into play. Okay, we're going to load in. Oops, AFK manager. Oh, that is just a bit of a Roblox Studio testing, so if you get these errors, I would always recommend testing inside of the Roblox player, as Studio can be a bit dodgy when it comes to testing this. And as you can see, when we focus back in, we lose our force field. So we're now on focus. Well, on focusing is when you close Roblox, so if you were to go from Roblox to another window, then that would be on focusing. To simulate focusing, I'm just clicking outside of the viewport, and then I'm gonna go back in, and I lose my force field. Now that's all good, but you guys wanted the force field material. So let me show you what this would look like. So you're literally going to make all of the player a force field, which looks a little bit like this, and is a pretty cool effect to show that they're invisible. So to do this, it is pretty much only three lines. Yes, it is that easy. So to do this, we're going to actually use a for loop. So to do this, we're going to say for underscore comma v in player dot character colon get descendants so we're getting all of the descendants and then we're looping do if v if v colon is with a capital a and then mesh part so we're going to check if it's actually a mesh part do and now here is nope it's not actually do it is then and then we're going to say v dot material equals enum dot material dot force field and now that's going to make all of the mesh parts a force field now why do we have an error? So to see why you're getting these red lines, you can just click on script analysis, expected end. Did we accidentally miss an end? Oh, I think we accidentally added one. Yeah, that's perfect. So there was accidentally an end already in there. So now the v.material is equivalent to the enum.material.force field. Okay, that's looking all good. Okay. Now you may be thinking to yourself, but hey, we forget to remove this. And you're totally right. So let's copy this lines 11 to 15 and then let's move to remove force field paste it in and where it says v.material equals enum.material.force field the default material for a character is plastic so let's do that and now let's test this out inside of our roblox studio so we're joining in okay and we're inside now and if we unfocus you can see we get that material and we get that um force field now if we focus back we lose both of them now finally, let's say you wanted to rank like this, so only staff members can go AFK. Well that is super simple. All you need to do is get your group ID, so local group ID equals 7. By the way, if you don't know how to get group IDs or rank IDs, I'll put a card in the top right right now which explains everything about group IDs and rank IDs. And then we're going to say local min rank equals 255. Now obviously, I'm not the owner of this group, so I'm not going to be able to go AFK. And let's create another function that actually returns true if you're allowed to go AFK if it is ranked locked. Once again, you don't need to add this if you don't want to. So let's say local function is allowed. And then we're going to say player once more so you can pass the player. And then we're going to say if player colon get rank in group and then group ID is larger or equal to min rank then return true. Then to do this, we're going to say if is allowed and then pass the player, then, and then we can copy and remove force field, and then we can do the same for the create force field, so if is allowed player, then create the force field, and then end, and perfect. So now let's test this out. Obviously, it shouldn't work, because I'm obviously not the owner of that group, and as you can see, when I unfocus, it doesn't work, and then when I focus, it still doesn't work. So that is exactly how we want it. Now, if this video did help you, please feel free to subscribe and like. 
Um, if you have any questions, you can head over to our forums on forums.thecookie.dev. And if you want to support the channel, you can become a channel member by clicking join down below. Thank you for tuning in. That's all from me, and bye-bye.